Let's take a look at anchoring. Anchoring, as you know, is an NLP technique that can allow you to accomplish a number of things. We have anchors that we can install that are resource anchors. Uh, we can anchor people to uh, have rapport with us. There are all sorts of uses for anchors. But what I want to talk about right now is the use of anchors that has to do with having people believe that you have certain attributes. Okay, so if you want someone to feel that you are motivated, for example, or honest, or loving, or powerful, or something like that, you can use an anchor to anchor that person to you to believe that you have those attributes. Now, my understanding is that you're not going to use this technology for anything that you shouldn't. Okay, my understanding is that you're an ethical, honest, wonderful person anyway, and that you're just using this technology to establish further rapport with your patient. Having said that, I want to introduce you to my next creation in my, uh, in my long line of creations in my art school here. This is a, a person with the, with the target area shown. This black area on the person is the, the target area, the, the hot zone, if you will. Because from approximately a one foot radius from the solar plexus in, in all directions, one foot radius, we have the zone that we can use to anchor people. So one foot being approximately a third of a meter for, for those who use the metric system. So it goes from about here, some might say it goes up uh, to the mouth, but it goes round and you get the idea from looking at the diagram and from what I've just done. So you can use your, your chin, your mouth as part of the target zone, but just to play it safe, I recommend staying as close to the solar plexus as possible. So what's the use of this? What can we, what can we actually do with this? Well, when we're using words to describe attributes that we want the patient to feel that we have, because after all, we want to establish trust, we want them to understand that we're knowledgeable and so forth, so that there's certain words that we want to have the patient feel that, that we possess, which we already do, but it's a lot easier to do it this way than to say, hey, by the way, you can trust me and I'm motivated and so forth, because it just sounds like tooting your own horn, as we say, when we do that. So why not use some NLP in establishing rapport? Let's, let me go ahead and show you how this is done. Let's say, for example, that you want your patient to feel that you are honest. That's a wonderful uh, concept for them to attribute to you, and that's going to do worlds of good in the therapy that you'll do with them. So if we want to have our patient believe that we are honest, the best thing to do is to talk about someone else and their honesty. And this sentence or paragraph will go something like this. You know, I enjoy working with honest people. I find that honesty is an attribute which is owned by very few. And those people in my life who have been honest, it's been a pleasure to associate with them. Okay. So what have I done? When I'm saying the word honest, I'm touching this area, okay? So I want to make sure that I'm not doing it in a very obvious way because let's face it, if you're just saying blah, 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 honest, such and such, such as honest, so forth, so forth, it's going to seem very obvious. Even if they don't know NLP, they're probably going to realize what you're doing. So you don't want to have the patient realize that you're doing that because that undermines everything. So. And by the way, you can also teach patients this technique because they can use it in their lives. This is a very powerful technique that people can go out and use in their lives because your patients are going to have job interviews and they're going to interact with the world also. So you may want to share this technique with them. After you've used it to establish rapport, you can say, hey, guess what I did? I, I did this and I want you to use that technique also. So there's a very honest approach to using the, the honest anchor. So if you're a lady, you may want to have a necklace that you can that you can play with, you can touch as you're saying the words. Let's say we want to anchor them to believe that we have motivation and we're talking about a lady with a necklace as the therapist delivering that. 
trying to, or anchoring the patient to believing that she has motivation. So the sentence would go, the paragraph would go something like this. You know, I really enjoy working with motivated, playing, imagine I have a necklace, with motivated people. The motivation that I've seen in many of my patients has helped them tremendously. And as we continue working together, I would hope that your motivation remains high. So you see what I'm doing. Normally, I wouldn't suggest condensing it like that, having it in a paragraph where you have motivation sentence after motivation sentence after motivation sentence. You can throw it in every now and then, every now and then throw a sentence in that has the word motivation and you're touching around that area. Uh, gentlemen, you can adjust your tie. Ladies play with a necklace. Um, gentlemen, occasionally touch right here. Okay, so all of this is perfectly valid and will help in the anchoring process. So, you want to use anchoring to establish rapport and you can also teach this technique to others because it's very, uh, very powerful and very helpful. But work on developing your covertness, if you will. Work on developing your stealth in doing this and have your patient work on that also because the last thing that you want with something like this is to have more suspicion generated than, uh, than them thinking you have positive attributes. So if it looks odd and suspicious, you want to, uh, you want to avoid it. But by, by using it uh, carefully and by spreading your sentences out, throwing them in here and there during the therapy, you'll find that you can uh, make tremendous progress in terms of establishing rapport. And remember, the whole idea of establishing rapport is to help the patient because when the patient believes in you, then it's easier for them to believe in the therapeutic value of what you're doing together. So it just adds to the power of the entire process.